Ploesti, outstanding achievement among great air battles, startled the world. The Romanian target, rich in oil and source of 20% of the life's blood of Hitler's Wehrmacht, was assigned to the 2nd Division before the unit was a year old. For weeks, under the fierce African sun and a wind that scored engines with fine grains of sand, the Liberator crews had worked to perfect the details of this mammoth task. On August 1st, 1943, five groups of V-24s were over Ploesti. They go through an inferno. Scudding above the trees, Liberators attack at a height little more than the oil refinery smokestacks. At point-blank range, they meet a deadly fire from small arms to large caliber anti-aircraft guns. Right through the dense smoke and flames roar the bombers, their delayed action bombs scoring one after another. The cost is high, but the mission, vitally important to Allied strategy, is accomplished in a paralyzing blow dealt the enemy. Ploesti provided the Germans with more than one-fifth of the oil needed to keep their war machine going full speed. This raid was one of the heaviest individual blows delivered against the contracting ring of steel around Hitler's empire. Every man who took part in that mission qualified as a hero. Awards recognized that, as Ploesti bred four men for the nation's highest decoration, the Congressional Medal of Honor. They were Colonel Leon W. Johnson of Moline, Kansas, Lieutenant Colonel Addison E. Baker of Akron, Ohio, Major John L. Gerstad of Racine, Wisconsin, and Second Lieutenant Lloyd H. Hughes of Corpus Christi, Texas. Hughes' courage was typical of all the men who flew that day. Flying in the last formation into the target, Hughes' plane was hit by flak. Gasoline streamed back over the wing and fuselage. Disregarding the long grassy plane beneath him, Hughes chose to continue on over the target rather than make a forced landing. Flying through the leaping columns of flames, the gasoline-soaked bomber dropped its explosives and emerged blazing. The pilot then attempted to land. Too late, the aircraft in Inferno plunged to the ground. Three of the awards of the Congressional Medal were posthumous. The fourth was presented to Colonel Johnson, later commanding general of the 14th Combat Wing, when the Liberators returned to England. Standing in front of his men and aircraft, the colonel was decorated by Lieutenant General Devers, then commanding the European Theater of Operation. While Ploesti was in the making, more and more Liberators were taking the long hop from the United States to bases in England, where they arrived at stations in the flat green countryside of East Anglia. Boomerang, pioneer with these first liberators over Europe, a veteran of Africa, the Middle East, and Great Britain, was the first B-24 liberator to complete 53 missions in the European theater of operations. After its 53rd flight, the battered bomber, which was almost scrapped after its first mission because of flak damage, went back to the States to tell how the libs were helping to win the victory of the air. Everyone came to Boomerang's going away party. There's the 2nd Division's former commanding general, General James P. Hodges, with group and wing commanders. Shaking hands with the pilot, the general and his staff, and the maintenance and combat crews pay homage to this bomber. Boomerang was never a plane to pick easy missions. Flying solo over Ploesti, she came back with corn stalks clinging to the bomb bay doors. Almost ready to go, Boomerang has covered nose to tail with names and messages of goodwill from its old friends and greetings to ground crews at air bases in the States. Now the engines turn over. The familiar takeoff roar is heard for the last time in England as the plane taxis down the runway. Boomerang is headed home. Her wheels lift from the ground as she quickly gains altitude. Does a 360 for one last goodbye, giving the base an airman's farewell before sweeping off into the west, homeward bound. An announcement in October of 1942 tells the Liberator men they are now the second bombardment wing early predecessor of the 2nd Air Division. The announcement had hardly been made when the major part of the 93rd was ordered to Africa on what was to be a detached service for 10 days. Before they returned again to England, however, what came to be known as the first African expedition had lengthened the 10 days to three months. From desert bases, they bombed Desert Fox Rommel's retreating army and attacked Naples and airdromes in Sicily to help in defeating the enemy in Africa the first major victory for the Allies in the European theater. The Liberators that had been left behind in England had not been inactive during that period. With the submarine menace threatening to cut the vital Atlantic lifelines, bombing of sub-buildings and repairing facilities was a top priority on the eight Air Forces list. Time after time, the Libs went to Brest, Lorient, to La Police and Saint-Nazaire to hit the undersea boats in their lairs. 
January 1943 and the first American bombing of Germany itself with the Libs and Forts leaving the great U-boat yards at Willemshaven ablaze despite 50 Jerry fighters and plenty of flak. Over the continent waits the Luftwaffe, deadly opponents in a sky still strange to friendly fighters. The crack units of the German Air Force, including the Abbeville Kids, JG-26, that expert group of Jerry fighter pilots who are always up and ready to intercept the bombers, daring to fly unescorted over Nazi-held Europe. With replacements of aircraft and crews coming in a thin trickle, losses to the then few liberators were a devastating blow. Only the courage and determination of the combat crews and the hard work and long hours of the ground personnel kept the tiny force going until the acceptance of daylight precision bombing at the Casablanca conference started replacements coming in an ever-increasing stream. Vegasoc, Antwerp, Brest, and other continental ports feel the weight of Allied bombs as the liberators and fortresses bore through the enemy defense. Spring of 1943 in Kiel's shipbuilding yards of the 